blood breathe upon your world. Please teach us your truth again. Help us tonight. Let your glory tabernacle be us. Thank you for the entrance of your word. Indeed brings us understanding. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please sit down very quickly. I just have 10-15 minutes. Can I have the scriptures? Extra chapter 3 from verse 10 to 13. Okay, good. I'm teaching on bringing back the glory. The Bible says, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of the David, the king of Israel. So you see, there are two spectacular men in scripture. One is Zerubbabel, and one is Nehemiah, or three rather, and then Ezra. They all existed in the same dispensation. Now, while Nehemiah was responsible for building Jerusalem wall, Ezra was responsible for building the temple. Do we understand that? So, Nehemiah specified in building Jerusalem wall, while Ezra specified in building the temple. Do we capture that? Now, the Bible says that when... They had um, laid the foundation of the, of the temple, set the priest in their apparels, and set all things in place. Verse 11 said, And they sang together by cause in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good. For his mercy endured forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. This is my emphasis. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men. Are we following tonight? Who were ancient men that had seen the house the way it was at the beginning when the foundation of this house was laid before the eyes. They wept with a loud voice. Now the people gathered there seeing the foundation being laid. They were joyful. They were all happy. But these ancient men who had an idea how the temple was before. The Bible says that they wept with a loud voice. So what the people were being impressed about was the building. But this man know beyond the building, there was a glory that radiated in the temple. That's why the Bible said they knew how it was before. Not because suddenly they built a different structure. But the problem there is, it's just a building. Remember in Chronicles, the Bible tells us that one time when the temple was set and the priest, everybody was in one accord, that we came down to a point that the priest couldn't perform their duties again. So the young men were happy, just like we are in our dispensation. But yet we begin to look at the exploits of others. We begin to look at how the church was before. How you know an average believer and it's not there again. How can somebody be in the faith 10 years? And he's still oppressed in the sleep. So it shows we are just holding on to the form of godliness. But denying the true power thereof. Bringing back glory. Are we getting blessed tonight? Bringing back the glory. So how comes we, we believe? Zoe, Zoe. That's what we sang. Zoe, Zoe. Right? Zoe, Zoe. We sang it so much. But tell me the truth. Is the way truly coming out of you? So it shows there is something wrong somewhere. An average believer. Acts chapter 6. An average believer the time like Stephen. Could wrought miracles in the days of the early church. It has nothing to do whether you carry a tie tool or you carry a tie. What matters is that the way life of God can adequately flow through you. A man called Ananias prayed and carried so much of the glory to a point it came out of him and radiated in the city such that when a drug drugger a murderer stepped into the city the dimension of glory coming out of him struck the man such that nobody was able to open his blind eyes again god had to send him back to the man who sponsored the release of that light in that city and said there is a brother that's what god said not a prophet not a, a pastor not an apostle a brother called ananias he said, I'm confident that when you go, if he prays for you, the eyes will open. Men, we are so confident that if the shadow of Peter can pass through the streets, the sick will get healed. Dead bodies will get life again. 
But can we say that about an average believer again? We are having a Christian faith that is not risen, prophets. God is calling for the restoration of his glory. There are ways the men of ancient lived. There are ways they saw the church operated. Not the kind of templates. You know, we're looking at the aesthetic, all the excellence, all the design, the blue colors, the red color, the green colors here and there. The Bible says, but the ancient men who saw the template of Christianity were weeping and said, this is not the church foundation. It's not how an average believer behaves. Why? We have altered it at a point. Are we getting blessed tonight? First Peter chapter 1, quickly. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. The Bible says, But be holy, for I am what? Holy. So where the church has missed it is that they have abandoned their call of holiness. Why? Because of the subtility teaching of the grace. Such that they forgot to be, um, that you can frustrate grace. Grace is not a license to sin. It's an empowerment not to do it. Do we understand that? So everybody just tells themselves you can live the kind of life you live. It's beyond, beyond you. It's not possible. Ma Matthew chapter 9 verse 17. Give me that scripture. The Bible says, can a man put a new wine in an old wineskin? So you must make a constant decision that once I make up my mind to give my life to Christ, I must put off the old man. I must lay it aside. That's what the Bible says. It didn't say we help you to put it off. You have to put off the old man. It simply means there are kind of relationship that you will cut. There are things you can no longer watch. There are things you can no longer keep on your phone. Notice what we didn't tell you when you gave your life to Christ. That you can give your life to Christ, but you're not going to live your life the way you lived before. You must put off. That's what it's like a garment. The Bible says you put it what? Off the old man. Do we understand tonight? Get away from iniquity. Away from sin. The Bible, Numbers 25, where pastor read for us, how that the attempt to cause the children of Israel couldn't work. And so Balaam introduced a system which was, there is a way I can make you curse yourself by just pushing you toward to sin. And the Bible said they gave themselves to water. And God cursed them himself. Something he was saying that no man can curse. Is a system. So, one way you enjoy satanic remembrance is when you get into sin. Sin activates certain kinds of demons. It announces you to the demonic realm that I'm available. Once you engage, you remove your divine covering. You remove your divine picture. You see, when you commit a sin or when you live a sin, you don't need to de the devil to fight you. You need yourself. Because anything that brings guilt suffocates your faith and confidence is that not so you feel you don't feel safe anymore you get into a room there is no light you that everywhere is dark because you have seen you are scared whether there are beings they are trying to kill you are we following anything that weakens and defies your conscience suffocates your faith do we understand that that's why an average believer cannot be confident to look at the disease and say be gone out of this body why the faith is what weakened because the conscience is what defiled. Sin unveils you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18, it said, don't you know that a man who commits fornication sinned against his own self. The original Greek word there simply means when you commit fornication, you fight your material world. Everything around your life, your finances, your career, your academies begins to go down. You sin against what? Your own sense. You fight. Your, you make yourself defenseless. You remove your protective covering. I wait till that tonight. Get away from it. Anything that draws you away from God is come be holy simply means the responsibility has been put on you but the ability has been supplied by God for instance for you can be dirty the bathroom is there the soap is there we go bathe you himself you will carry yourself get to the bathroom pick the soap and wash yourself to be clean right be holy are we getting blessed tonight the Bible says and the ancient men when they saw that the foundation were being 
they begin to weep and they begin to cry because they knew how the foundation was before the strength of an average believer an average believer was feared and revered your words were like laws and legislations on the surface of the earth now any little thing can threaten you any little thing can threaten you why you are weak you you, you you pray you are not even confident of your prayer because your faith is what is weak oh god show up in these exams you know when they say let's pray now you are not confident because you know the kind of life you live are we together what's our scriptural responsibilities very quickly our scriptural responsibilities give me exodus 15 and verse 11 let me show something there exodus Exodus 15 and verse 11. The Bible says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee? Glorious in what? Holiness. That means the density of holy living. It means the density of the glory on you. Hear me, the amount of glory God releases to a man is the amount he is willing to jealously guard. Some of you want to raise the dead, it will never happen. Because know that there is a way you protect such an oil. Such that you don't contaminate it. The amount of glory resident on your life is that you are willing to jealously guard and protect. He is glorious in holiness. The weightiness, your dimension of purity determines the weightiness of the hands of God on your life. He is, you want to see glory? Live a life of holiness. Run away from sin. It tampers with the oppression and the release of the Zoe life out of you. What's our scriptural responsibility tonight? Number one. Number one. Make a conscious decision to put off the old man and all its conversations. Ephesians 4 and verse 22, Colossians 3 and verse 9. He said, put off the old man and all its what conversations. Ephesians 4, 23, 22 and Colossians 3 and verse 9. The Bible says that you put off what? Consigning the former conversation, the old man. The way you were behaving before you gave your life to Christ. Won't stop automatically. You make the conscious effort to change. You are a believer. All the songs sang by portable is on your phone. That's even your ringing tune. No, it's a mockery. Have you seen Shango worshiper playing Christian worship? They say, no, let's mix it. Only Christianity try to look for excuse on how to mix things. I know one thing about God is the first thing he warned them when they were getting to the promised land was to avoid a mixed life. Deuteronomy 22. He said a man should not put what pertains to a woman. A woman should not put what pertains to a man. Mixed life. He said you should not plant two different crops. The next one, right? In the same field. Mixed life. He said you should not sow three different types of... He was talking about what? A mixed life. Do we understand that? Put it off. God didn't say, behold, I will take it off. You make the conscious effort. There are friends, you know, if you keep living with them, you will soon go again. You have to put them off. Do we understand that? Put them what? Off. The way you were speaking before. The kind of language and vocabulary. You have to make conscious efforts to what? Let them go. The kind of movies you give yourself to. You have to let them go. Else, you are a mockery to the salvation you encountered. Your Christian experience is questionable. There are things I love the early days of my life. I can't do them again. Not because they are not lawful, but they are not expedient. They are not necessary for my existence. I have to let them go for the sanctification of my heart and soul. I don't watch movies. Because if I watch the kind of things you watch, I won't see the kind of things I see. I will only see the kind of things you too can see. But I protect my eye. So it won't clash with revelations and prophetic releases when God is showing me things. It won't be supposing themselves. I protect my eye. There are songs you cannot catch me listening. I can't. There are places you can never see me. There are things you cannot catch me doing. This is a conscious effort to put off old man all its worth. The Bible says, lie not one to another. Seeing that you have what? Put off the old man with his deeds. Do we understand that? Your character did not change after you gave your life to Christ. Your experience is questionable. You can't be bearing a Christian name without a Christian heart. Some of you are the reason why people hate Jesus. You come to church but you are a mockery. 
By your, you, you are just one soul coming to church. But by your eyes, by the church, you have driven a thousand out of church. They see you and say, God forbid. Christians are hypocrites. If this is how they live their lives. Do we understand that? They know the way you behave, the way you talk. And they come down to so we lift up holy hands. You are not caught. There is nothing caught in there. You are lifting on holy hands. The Bible is speaking in James chapter 3. He said, can a man bring forth both sweet and bitter waters out of one spring? Can the same mouth you use to bless God is the same mouth you use so by portable? The same mouth. Look at how wonderful your, your, your song is. Do you know in the early days of the temple and the church, every the temple was anointed, the microphones, you are the biological microphone from which God speaks to his creator now. So you are supposed to be sanctified and consecrated for that purpose. You are a biological rule. Be used by God in these early days. Not only in the temple, even outside the temple. Exactly. We just spent two hours in this meeting. But you are seen seven days throughout the week. So your life outside this building is more important to the kingdom than the life you pro profess in of God. Everybody here is a believer. Go out. You'll be shocked that we don't have Christians. Only in the church. Say, so if I drop this my Christianity and show you who I am, is it a clothes you wear? Do we understand that? It shows that the old man here, yeah, you are trying to put on the new man and overlay it with the old man. The Bible says it will burst the bottle. That's why your life is the way it is. Is that not the Bible saying? Is the way you try to put the old one in the new one? He said the bottle will burst. Do we understand that? You can't be praying in tongues. And then be living in sin by sending negative energy into your system again. That's why you will begin to break down in health. Because there is a rush of energy. Do we understand what I'm saying? So put off what? The old man. Number two. He learn to flee every appearance of evil. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 22. Learn to flee. I came tonight just to remind you. Because some of you feel, you know, there is a fire on top of us. That's why we can live our life. Our life. God has just called us separately and anointed us to be unique and special. You don't know there are sacrifices, disciplines, consecrations we embark upon. The Bible says you should what? Flee. First Thessalonians 5.22. Quickly. It says flee every appearance of evil. I want us to see together. 22. Quickly, 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 quickly. Flee every what? Appearance. Abstain from every appearance of evil. Wait. Let me read your version. Whether I'm correct. Abstain from every evil. Is that what your version? No. Appearance. It doesn't need to be evil. Once you suspect it looking like that. That's why you fall. You went to the party. You saw the kind of things happening there and you sat down waiting for the evil to develop. Then when the evil has developed, you say, Shata, krata, krata, it will work. You know you are a young man. You are trying to walk, you know, stretching your walk with God. Then suddenly every lady's house is your house. And when you the sexually filled movies you are watching, then when you want to happen, you say, Sister, Sister, you are me. You will do it speaking in tongues. Stop making a mockery of your can walk. The last time I had my skin caught, I was in that with the way I pray, with the way I fast. I should ex olive oil should be coming out. Goya. I was shocked it was still blood. Then I knew that it doesn't that was still Don't deceive yourself. The Bible says this is one secret, and that's where your temptations are. You see appearances of evil. See, don't stay in what we call the circumstance of, of sin. Should I show you? The Bible says in Genesis 3, there about no chapter, chapter 5, it, talking about Cain, it's knock at your door. It's like a personality coming. Don't stay in its circumference. Are we following? Don't stay in the environment of sin. Don't stay among people. Things, movies, information that can make it easily for you to disobey God. You must make conscious effort. The God that has asked Remember, I didn't say run. Flee is the advanced brother. Run. What did I say? Flee is the advanced brother. It simply means disappear. You saw a scripture like this, and you say, I will stay there and speak in tongue. And I want you, this tongue is failing. No. And then, then you change it. The thing is still not working. Oh God, they said what? Flee. Tell your neighbor, flee. They didn't say tongues. They say what? Flee. Let's change our behavior as believers. And let's see the Zoe life of God coming out inside of us. How a woman threatened great servant of God, he that was her so much, he will send his video in the Benin Broadcasting Network for that. And when he got wind of it, he went. I said, they say you are the one that keeps my videos.
you, you are fired. In until they removed her. What kind of unction was flowing through those men? What made the award carry power and weight? How will I stand there in just one meeting? After two weeks of your struggle and saying 48 hours, the light will be restored in the campus. You, you think that's the word of a mortal man? Come and say it. You are so confident. Extremely, you have sleepless night. No, no, no lack of sleep or lack of peace about that. That the words you have spoken, the heavens is obligated to move and act on them. It's a, it's a level. Do we understand? Are we getting blessed? When I was in the campus, some of you heard my story. No lecturer dares to threaten me. One of one time we were fallen first class. The HOD came, they, they gave him a man the HOD. And he said, Ah, first class are too much First class are too much in this apartment. Only one will come out. When I came around and they just told me about it, they, I said, It will leave for me. The next day, the man used his hand and resigned. I said, I don't want to be HOD again. We know the Bible says that the, the king is in his hands. He can turn it. He made a human being become an animal and eat grass for nine years. And to prove that he was God, when he was done, he kept the throne and put him back there. No, you see a man that is mad now and he was here, then he contests the government. Will you vote him? But well, God did it. Do we understand that? Number three, are we getting blessed tonight? Number three, exercise yourself unto godliness. First Timothy 4 verse 7. You can't live a loose life and have a firm Christian walk. You can't live a loose life and have what? A firm Christian walk. Exercise yourself. The Bible, 1 Timothy 4, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. Quickly, I'll pray. The Bible says, but refuse profane and old wife fables and exercise thyself rather unto what? Godliness. Engage in constant spiritual disciplines. Your devotion is intact. You have weekly, you have set aside for fasting. You have your prayer time. When you lose, see, Christian life that is not backed up by adequate Christian risk, we know that. By adequate Christian discipline, rather, we know you great result. Are we following? This way we regulate our temperature in the place of prayer as we give ourselves to the world. We keep our temperature, our, our spiritual temperature on a standard temperature. For some of you, your life, your prayer life, that's why we are in church. Your Bible study life is only on Bible study day. You don't have a life. Are we understanding that? Exercise thyself. How will you be a Christian at your age and the number of years you have spent in Christianity? You don't have one in the week you set aside to fast. The only time you fast in your entire life is when church declares fasting. So in the whole full year, church says, Don't fast. How do you want to survive? The Bible says always to pray and not to faint. The only time you pray is when you come to church. You don't have your own personal prayer life. At last, exercise thyself until what? Godliness. That's the missing link. You miss your devotion, gradually, gradually you miss your Christian work. You wake up in the morning, you don't pray, you jump into the day, come back, then the battles and battles of life hit you left, left, right, center. And then there's nothing you can do about that. Before you know you are falling again. Do we understand what I'm saying tonight? Finally, covet the ability of God that comes from the finished work of Christ. Give me Jude chapter 24. Let me show you my secret. It's a prayer I pray every morning. When I wake up and I'm done with all my prayer, I say, Lord, I plunge into your ability that is able to pay man from falling and to present him blameless before you. There's an ability in God. Jude 1 24. The Bible says, Now unto what him speaking up that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Plunge into that ability. Daily. But I plunge into your ability that is able to keep a man from falling. If you have any aspect of your life where you have a struggle, cry out. What you don't address today will undress you tomorrow before the world. Do you get that? And you know, some of you, the problem is that you don't have devil will tempt you or will bring you down from the place of your weakness. You know the problem is that we have rated sin in rankings in the, in the body of Christ. As long as you are not in fornication, you are standing. But forgotten that the devil is holding you by pride. If you don't have pride, you are a great man. But the devil has got you by lie. You are an expert in telling lies. He won't use what he knows you will not fall by. You have mastered overcoming fornication. What of pride? 
pot of anger, bitterness. And you know the good thing about him from that area of your fall, that's where he kills and weakens your Christian work. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. And say, Lord, how do you think you want to bless Pastor Baro? Can't you see the way angry? Can't you see the way he was bitter? Then you are wondering why the glory is not made manifest from your mortal body. Why eternal life is not finding expression on you. Do you understand that? How is somebody just walking in the city and disease will jump out of them? You heard the story of my daughter last two weeks. How they say, I need money. Say, go and stay inside Papa's office. Instantly, not tomorrow. And heaven moved because she came into an atmosphere of a man that is not there. That's how Christianity should be. Are we following? Not that we are just, just fulfilling all righteousness with our mouths. Especially your life outside the church. Some of you, you are being punished not by, the, by God. Because you are a, a rottenness to his bone. A disgrace to his church. The life you are living outside is stopping men from coming to the kingdom. So God is not sending the devil to punish you himself. He's taking the foundations of your life and say, you touch my... See, one thing you should be careful of is that your life should not stop people from coming to church. You know why? That God is jealous of his church. He said, I will build my church. And the gates... He went to his temple. Such a loving Jesus. Come. Somebody they insulted. He didn't say anything. They spit on him and said, tell me who, 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 who spit on you, prophesy. He didn't say anything. The Bible says he said not a word. But he got to his temple and saw them bustling. He said, I won't pray in the Holy Ghost. Give me Cain. I go physical this time around. When he comes to his temple, he exhibits his weakness. That's when you can understand the consuming fire. I'm telling you, some of you, your destiny is being shot. Because your life is an hindrance to the growth and advancement of the kingdom. You can't mess up and come to church and become an hindrance to the glory from coming. The Bible says they what? And the glory came down. One person can push up the release of the glory in the meeting. Change your life. Do we capture what I'm saying? Change your life. Challenge yourself. Let my life to God. Let my lifestyle bring many to the kingdom. Bring men from coming in. You are an open door for men to enter the kingdom, not a closed door. People should not be hating God because of you. Then you come to that same God and say, change me, bless me. How do you think? How do you reason? See, that's why, see, one of the ways you can cross Christianity is to, God, you know, God only saves people that have sense. Should I show you a scripture? <laughs> Any man you see that is saved, that have sense. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, I think verse 18 there about, he said, come, if your sin is red and scarlet, it doesn't matter. Come, let us reason together. So he works with reasonable people. He said, let us reason. He doesn't, he doesn't matter who you are, but let you be a reasonable person. You can't come here after such a wonderful meeting. You are, you are taught the word of God. You are radiated with his glory. And you go out, you are fighting. You are living a loose life. Staying in the name of God. Insulting people, talking to people anyhow. Living life for us. Cheating in exam hall. They are even telling you to stand up and they know the church you attend. You are jokes. And they say, ah, so they, they lie, lie for that. Nobody the church where they say the power they give people A. They, they change people's results. But you come, you say, what is just a result? Come, you say, result doctor. And he's raising cleanse and patient at his eye hall. You are a shame and a disgrace to God. Come for the grace of God upon your life. First Corinthians 15 and verse 10. The Bible says, Paul said, and I am what I am by the grace of God. Nevertheless, this grace was not what in made me work harder. I am a workaholic. Grace. Why? Because there is a functioning of an ability that is not human in the inside of me. I walk. Grace makes you walk what? Harder. What make you become more lazy? I've told you if you don't read, you can decide the way you will fail. You have F and are waiting F. Because anything the anointing comes upon, it lifts. Then it's coming upon your, your bad head. Don't you see the Bible say he anoints my head? with oil and then that is where goodness now flows and it comes with the anointing there's nothing upstairs the thing will just expand the foolishness will just expand around you lift hands and say Lord address every aspect of my life that needs your touch tonight I choose to change I don't want to live a life of mockery a life of deceit people know me they call me Christian names they say I like this church care but I know my life behind the scene is not what I'm about I open myself before you oh God touch my life tonight change my life tonight 
address every situation in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, I say this as I prophesy over us. Your life to Christ. The day you came into the Christian faith, you carried the label of Christ on your neck, on your head. So know that you are not anything you are doing doesn't affect you alone. You carry the name of God on your life. Be careful. Don't attract the route of God. Some of you, the battles you feel, you are afraid, you are afraid, you are afraid, you are afraid. No, God is seeing what you are doing to his kingdom by your lifestyle, by your behavior outside. One time we, we went together with some people for evangelism. And then we had somebody say, oh, where are you from? We told them everything. Yes, yes I swear I can never come. So why? He said, there was one girl that used to attend there. She was my roommate. Kai! After three years, she had graduated. She's still impactful in making people not to come to church. How do you help a person's life to be better? When your impact is still felt in hindering the advancement and the growth of God's house, years after you are well, you are, you are gone. I prophesy over you that may God remove from your life whatever does not glorify Him's name. Every addiction, every struggle, every weakness, every old man still in the inside of you waiting to show forth may it be roasted by fire in the name of Jesus. I prophesy on that God may it be roasted by fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible verse with ability in God that is able to keep a man. It's an ability from falling and to present him blameless before himself. May that ability rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy. May that grace. Did this you you came to this service? Just watch. The word is the miracle. It has gone forth into you, their spirit and life. Find out that those struggles are gone. In the name of Jesus. See. What is left is that you can choose to carry yourself to go back to it. And I spoke God's word to you. The weakness and the struggle is gone. In the name of Jesus. Please go back to your notes. Look at the things I said. How, what are your Christian words? Responsibility to live and live holiness. Flee every appearance of evil. Check your phones. Check the kind of movies you watch. Things that have obscene scenes. Don't cut them off can't be claiming that you are trying to protect yourself and you are doing things that will make you unprotected. Is a mockery now. You are lying to yourself. You lying. Say, oh Lord, save me, save me. Lord, I truly want to, want to. And you know what you are watching. The Holy Ghost help you when you show that you are willing to re 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 em em embrace his help. You do the wrong thing and ask him to just do abracadabra by force and help you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon Amen. you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. The Lord grant peace in the name of Jesus. Doors of favor are open for you. Doors of miracle are open for you. Your paths are paved with gold. Money come to you with free cause. In the name of Jesus. You will never be stranded. You will never be confused. You will never be depressed. Your mental health is sound. Your mental health is sound. In the name of Jesus. The hand of God is on your life, is on your academics, is on your finances, is on health, is on your destiny. In the name of Jesus, the glory of God is evident upon you. In the name of Jesus. Over your exams, I prophesy. Quick understanding. Let study be released upon you. Have memory to recall anything you study. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for clear cut directions as you study. In the name of Jesus. May these exams be the best you have ever written. I release favor for you. I release favor for you. And as my usual custom is, for everyone that have a course to write tomorrow Monday, I write it down and note that course. It doesn't matter what you write. It's by the vantage point of my standing and my office. I give you an A. Every course you have to write through Monday. Let me make it on, on Tuesday too. I prophesy. 
by the strength of my call and office, by the covenant of the prophetic, I decree an A. 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 In the name of Jesus. Finally, I pray for you. Now and the next 72 hours. The kind some miracles and favor you have never enjoyed made for you Amen. I release financial miracles Amen. now I release financial miracles Amen. now in the name of Jesus Amen. the Lord bless and keep you Amen. the Lord cause his face to shine upon you in Jesus name this is your first time worshiping God see your hand quickly pick your bags your Bible come to the front let me celebrate you the meeting is declared closed please walk to 50 people okay we have we announced last week that there's something we are going to do after the end of every service and now we close all our meetings. But let me still profess over you, then I do that. Is that okay? I declare and I declare oil on your head. Amen. Glory and favor on your life. Amen. Money in your hands. Amen. Help, Amen. help us all around you. Amen. Heaven's defense system all around Amen. you. And defense is def uh, def your feet and destiny. In the name of Jesus, Amen. who are you? I'm a son that question you respond as we close all our meetings you say I mean, if you are a man you say I'm a son of grace if you are a lady you say I'm a daughter of grace who are you? I'm a son of grace who are you? I'm a son of grace who are you? Son of grace. give the Lord a song the Lord bless you Thank you for listening. We trust you have been blessed. You can stay empowered by connecting to us on Facebook at Grace Realm Ministries International, Instagram at Grace Realm Global, and Telegram at Grace Realm Channel. You can follow us on our online radio at www.forward/mixlr.com forward slash Grace Realm. You can also contact the following helplines 0812 2477 859 or 0813-038-3112.